Hello friends, now let us learn about the investigations that you do for benign prosthetic hyperplasia and I will wind up the today's lecture uh, by discussing about the treatment options available for benign prosthetic hyperplasia. So first, the best way of investigation is through history. In history, there are some symptom score sheets like international uh, prostrate symptom score. So this symptom score gives us the information about the severity of symptoms. Severity of symptoms and the changes of these symptoms over a period of time. So this international prostate symptom score this will at the end assess the quality of life of the person. How well the person is able to live. That is assessed by this international prostate symptom score. So that is one. And the second one, the patient is asked to complete a frequency volume diary. So this will even help uh, to know about the variations of fluid intake and the output that he uh, voids, right? So the next investigation uh, include, uh, this is about history. Now coming to investigations, the first essential investigation includes urine analysis to, to, to rule out if there is any chance of infection urine analysis uh, uh, first by dipstick this is for any glucose or sometimes bread or protein for proteinuria okay this can be done and second uh, urine culture for uh, in any traces of infection and you should know the kidney function to rule out uh, the oliguria or some kidney failure for that you should do serum creatinine and finally the most important that is urine flow rate and residual urine volume measurement so this is most important for these studies, for this benign prosthetic hyperplasia. So these are the main investigations which can be do, which can be done. The others investigations include number one, prostate specific antigen, number two, pressure flow studies. Okay, so these are the investigations which we generally do. So let us exa and let us undergo uh, the clinical examination uh, in a systemic way so that we really understand the importance of each of them clearly. Right. So the first one is abdominal examination. So after history, we generally ask the patient to undergo an examiner ab abdominal ex examination. In that, first we will palpate. When we pal palpate, if there is chronic retention of urine, there may be distended bladder. The reason for distended bladder is chronic retention of urine. Okay, and then on percussion, also you can see distended bladder because of bladder dullness is felt. And on inspection, there is loss of suprapubic crease which is present because of distension of bladder. So there is no suprapubic crease. Okay, uh, you should examine for anemia and also signs of dehydration. Okay, these are additional signs. And then rectal examination can be done. Through rectal examination, 
prostate can be felt that is prostate posterior surface it is felt it is generally smooth convex and elastic if there is fibrinous as i have said fibromuscular type it may be firm in consistency normally it is smooth but if it is fibromuscular type then it is firm in consistency sometimes through rectal examination residual urine can also be felt this is basically felt has bulge above the prostate okay above prostate it can be felt has bulge so if this is the rectum uh, so you have this as the prostate and here you can see has a bulge the residual urine okay so this is the residual urine this is the prostate okay so this is what we see on per rectal examination then you should examine the nervous system this is most important so nervous system examination is really important because we should rule out diabetes mellitus tibus dorsalis disseminated sclerosis cervical spondylosis parkinson's disease and others neurological status because all these will mimic dorbidine prostatic hyperplasia so these should be ruled out okay if you suspect uh, any bladder outflow obstruction then you can do the pressure flow urodynamic studies in this state okay the next thing is serum serum prostate specific antigen prostate specific antigen so this is basically unspecific non specific we can say it is specific sorry it is prostate specific antigen um so basically um this is majorly measured by uh, sometimes uh, a prostate biopsy should be might be required to do this uh, test basically it is not important in uh, bladder outflow obstruction it is majorly done for done to detect early prostate cancer this is majorly done what is the indication it is done for males who are below 70 years and with positive history uh, in the family okay and uh, um, if this prostate specific antigen is 
more than 2.5 to 4 nanomoles per liter, then we should do transrectal ultrasound and multiple biopsies. Multiple transrectal biopsies. For carcinoma prostate. Okay. So this is what is done for basically for diagnosis of carcinoma prostate you should do these tests. Okay. So these are for serum prostate specific antigen. Now coming to the flow rate measurement. This is most important for benign prostatic hyperplasia. So for this we don't record just one flow rate but two or three wires should be no uh, should be uh, recorded so uh, in all the two or three volume voids the voided uh, volume should be more how much more it should be more than 150 to 200 ml so if flow rate is less than 10 milliliters per second then treatment is recommended so generally this flow rate measurement is used along with ultrasound measurement Out of what of uh, post void urine after flow rate how much urine is residual is left in the uh, bladder is um, noted so first we measure the flow rate number one and along with it we measure the residual urine that uh, the residual urine that is post void after voiding the amount of urine that has remained in the bladder these two give us good information about the uh, bladder outflow out uh, bladder outflow obstruction so if there is decreased flow rate what does that show if there is decreased flow rate, one, benign, uh, bladder outflow obstruction, number two, detrusor instability, even in detrusor instability, there is decreased flow rate, right? Number three, there is weak bladder contractions. I have already said in my last class, what is the difference between bladder outflow obstruction and these two? In bladder outflow obstruction, the uh, flow rate is low, but the pressure is high. Whereas in detrusor instability and weak bladder contraction, the pressure is low, but and the uh, flow rate is also low. Right? So this is what flow rate measurement tells us. Now, let us learn about the pressure flow urodynamic studies. Pressure flow urodynamic studies which are done. Right? So, what are the indications of these? Number one, if they are they have suspected neuropathy. What neuropathies are we uh, thinking of? Diabetes mellitus. Parkinson's, stroke, multiple sclerosis, okay, let me write it or else we'll, we'll think of something else, right? Multiple sclerosis or dementia, all these, for all these cases, you should do this pressure flow studies. And number two, if there is history, history of irritative symptoms and lower urinary tract 
symptoms which we have discussed in our uh, previous classes okay and number 3 if they have doubtful history and they have some uh, flow rates uh, to normal around normal approximately normal in such situations also we do if they have in valid flow rate measurements why because of reason is low voided volume whenever there is very low voided volume we don't know how much flow rate it is because at least we should have 200 flow rate 200 uh, milliliters of voided volume to know whether there is flow rate or not right in those situations we do it these pressure flow urodynamic studies okay finally we can do blood tests these blood tests include creatinine to know the uh, function of the kidney electrolytes to know whether there is any electrolyte imbalance and hemoglobin to know anemia because hematuria is one of the major symptom uh, related to these problems and then examination of urine as i have just mentioned it is done for glucose for blood uh, and for culture for infection it is done okay and finally you can do a cysto urethroscopy through cysto urethroscopy it is done basically transurethrally okay that is through the urethra uh, we pass this cystos urethroscopy and we can see we can visualize bladder and urethra and also the prostate these can be visualized so all the carcinoma or others others everything can be visualized through this and we can also do transrectal ultrasound scanning so what does this tell us this tells us the size of the prostate is better assessed by this transrectal ultrasound scanning so all these are the investigations and the assessment of lower urinary tract infections in our next class we will deal with the treatment aspects related to uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts you can um comment in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture please comment comment in the comment section thank you guys for watching my video thank you